Hey guys, Brent Hull, Build Show. Today we're gonna to be talking about door headers. Now, if you can build a beautiful door header, you can build beautiful mantles, you can elevate the quality of your work, but there are secrets to getting it right. There are secrets to how to build them, and that's what we're gonna talk about today on the Build Show. Okay guys, so how do you elevate your work? How do you improve the quality of the things that you're building? I've been teaching you about the classical system and if you haven't watched the videos on how the classical system works, I want you to go back and review it, okay? The reason why I'm trying to teach this archaic way of building is that that is how beautiful things are made. Now, we did in our Georgian video and in our upcoming federal video, we're gonna look a lot about door headers, okay? We're gonna be studying door headers. Now, you may remember the Charleston dining room, beautiful pedimented dining, uh, door header over top of this door. You may remember Philadelphia Hall, beautifully decorated broken pediment. Um, those were beautifully elevated door headers, okay? But how did they do it? What were the parts and pieces they used to put it together? We have built um, mantles like this in the past where we are using the classical system, right? And if you remember that classical system, we've got a column that supports a beam. Okay, that beam is called an entablature. The entablature is made up of three parts. Okay, you've got the architrave, you've got the frieze, and you've got the cornice. Now, if you look at this mantle that we built at the, in, the, in the Georgian room, right, which is very similar to this, this is in a Georgian video, very similar to this, this here, our architrave, right, is the door casing, is this thing, architrave means king beam, okay, it's the, it's the heavy beam that goes and supports the opening. So, you know, pre-1900, most door and window casings were called architraves, okay? We call them door casings today, but they're architraves, right? They're part of this classical system. It supports the frieze and the cornice. Now, um, this basically is a mini uh, entablature, right? This is the, the way that system's laid out. You've got the door casing that runs around, right? You've got your pull a frieze, and then you've got your cornice. Now. We're gonna be talking about these two parts today, but um, these are what kind of make beautiful work. Now, what you don't wanna do, and, and what I've seen mistakes is, is that guys will have door case and they'll have architrave, 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 okay? They'll have too many parts and pieces. And it's really this system of building, right, that is perfected, okay, and they perfected beauty. So, um, let's build a door header. Now, what we did was we still have our Georgian room set up here, right? Remember, we elevated the opening by having not just door casing there, but putting the cross-headed frieze over top of it or the cross-headed corners over top, right? So in our architrave, we created those little ears that go out and they're called cross-headed corners, right? Now we want to elevate that. Well, if we do, our next piece is our frieze, right? So that's that flat piece there. Now, our, the, uh, the frieze can really be three different ways. It can be flat, like this, okay? It can be pulvinated, like this, where it has a, this slight round, and it can be pulvinated like this, okay? Um, this one has kind of a sweep to it. There's a, there's a lot more movement to it. Um, the frieze, when we get into the federal period, will be the thing that's very decorated, right? So um, here's one of those pulvinated friezes, right? This one has that, that sweep detail that you'll see, right? So we've got this sweep here. Now, um, this one has a pulvinated frieze and it's just kind of bulbed out, right? Um, the pulvinated frieze gives a little bit more life to the door opening. It looks like there's compression there. It looks like it's supporting something. So the pulvinated frieze is really pretty. Uh, the next piece is the cornice. Now. Cornice is made up of three parts. You've got a bed mold, which you're probably familiar with, corona, and cymation, okay? Now our crown moldings and everything else that we use in a room are like this. If you use the Kukin and Windsor lines, you'll know that we have designed those so that they have this, this more classical organization of how the cornice is put together. The bed mold is a supporting molding, okay? The bed mold is uh, meant to lift up, right? It has to carry all of this, so that molding has a shape that goes up and it supports. If I was going to lift a weight here, I'm going to support it like this. If I'm if I'm at the top, you have what's called a terminating molding, right? Ta-da! Right? And it finishes, right? So we have moldings that have purpose, right? We have a pulvinated frieze that shows compression, 
we have an architrave that carries, right? And so all these moldings have purpose and they're not random. Now, the other thing you, you'll notice on this thing is that I've got moldings that are scaled to be scaled to the size of this opening, right? If we were if we were doing a room, right? If we were putting a crown in this room, we might have a three or four inch uh, crown molding at the top. Here I've got a little two and a half, two and a quarter inch crown molding here. It's proportioned and scaled to the size of this thing. So if you're building these door headers for your job, you cannot use big crown moldings. Don't buy one size crown molding and go try to build your mantles with it, go try to build your door headers with it. You need smaller moldings for these kind of things. You need smaller moldings for mantles um, so that the scale and proportion looks right. There's a couple ways to elevate this and uh, first we'll just start with this pulmonated freeze, right? It could be a flat freeze. It could just have something flat that goes across there. Remember, it's the architrave, which is what we've already got here, the freeze in the cornice. So you can see how putting this over top, right, really elevates and, you know, uh, gives the impression that this is an important door. Part of the whole classical system is a communication tool, right? Reminding you as you walk into a space where I'm supposed to go, what's important, what's, a, what's an important room. And so uh, elevating doors and elevating a front door, elevating a door that goes to a dining room or to a formal space is a way of communicating. The, uh, this other pulmonated freeze, right, when we put it up here, um, is also pretty, right? It also really elevates the look of this door opening and really commands presence here. Now, the cool thing about this pulmonated freeze is that, you know, if you just cut a miter on it, right, which is what we did on this pulmonated freeze, just cut a miter, you can see that that shape, you know, it, it's pretty expressive, but it's not crazy, right? What we did here, and this is how we used a pulmonated freeze to help us solve a situation is we had a door opening in a dining room going to a kitchen that we were elevating. We had no room on either side of the door because it was so tight going into that room. So imagine there's a cabinet right here, right? And a cabinet right here going into this room. Well, if you see this other freeze, right? This one kicks, kicks way over and would end up hitting our cabinet, right? Because of the way this hits. What we did was, we you know, basically took this pulmonated freeze on a bandsaw and really got expressive with this shape. Did a big S shape here, right? This is what that looks is. And what that did is it pulled in our cornice so that we didn't block into our cabinet, right? And so it's a pretty slick way of playing around with a door header, right? Solving different problems on rooms and really elevating elevating the situation elevating the door now understanding this classical system understanding how the the architraves the entablature all those parts and pieces work allow you to make more beautiful things allow you to do headers and mantles and door openings right to do better work <clears throat> that's why we're teaching this classical system that's why it's so important so that you can be better craftsmen i'm brent hull follow me on instagram facebook thanks for watching